And after every show, you keep all the marionettes? Yeah, since Tinka, I've kept everything, yeah. And they're all in the morgue, so to speak? They're all in the basement morgue, yeah. They, they won't go to another show. How many, how many are in the morgue in the There's basement? several hundred down there, I think. Wow. Yeah. They don't always trans... Like, if you put them side by side, like the, the puppets in Billy Twinkle are a different proportion. They're all on the same scale, but Billy had big heads because I wanted them to look like puppets. And on Penny, I, I really wanted to go back to this sort of naturalistic proportion. They're not realistic, but they're more naturalistic. Um, and the puppets before, uh, before uh, Tinka's dress was the first one. The puppets or the marionettes before that were before Tinka. Yeah, they were grotesque. You know, but they, they were, were thrown out. They were burned. They were recycled. Uh, they were. I got they're, they're like lives for me. I mean, Ronnie, they're like people. So you have a morgue and you yeah. have all these voices in the basement. Yeah. And that worries me. <laughs> and what did you do to the people who people of the world before Tinka? Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the ones you? before Tinka went. You know, went I, where? Some went in the garbage, frankly. Um, and How can you throw a marionette in the garbage? Oh, easily, <laughs> quite easily, because you know you think, oh my gosh, that. If I die before everyone else, they're going to think all of this is important. And I've always hated that puppet, so let's just get rid of it, you know. Um, but a lot of them got auctioned off, you know. I did a lot of fundraising for various oh, things okay. I believed in and, and would uh, okay. auction them off. Uh, okay. Not for my own gain, but to help AIDS Calgary or whatever little thing was going on. Um, you know, which is why I don't have an extensive design portfolio, because a lot of those drawings got auctioned off. So right. Trying to hoard stuff now, just so I have a bit of a portfolio. That makes me feel better. I had an, a vision of you taking plastic bags and suffocating your marionettes <laughs> and then putting them in the garbage. I, I couldn't deal with that. See, yeah. they're real for me. I, I, are they real for you? No. No. No, I, I mean, they are really my instruments, and, and I regard them as such, so I have high regard for them, and I'm very particular about how they get packed, how they travel, you know, how they're treated, because I really hate doing repairs on the road. That's the main reason, and they're built really well, so we don't have to do that many repairs. Um, but, you know, a thing happens uh, that you hope for with every character, but it, it, it does happen with a great number of them, is in the envisioning of them on the page, be it as the writer or the designer, and then the guy, the craftsman, you do hope that it's going to be a magical character. But that's three things happening. That's the physical machine that you make, and that's the character that you've created in the text, but it's also the audience reaction to that character. Right. And so there have been a number of those Cadillacs, as I call them, where the puppet embodies all of those things. The audience reacts to it as they should. The machine works really well, and it's a joy to perform. And it all comes together. It doesn't always come together. Like I spent a lot of time building a character named Bongo for Happy, which was a show in 2000. And I thought Bongo was going to be the new like signature theater marionette's character. And he, was a be he is a beautiful puppet, and I loved his character. But he just wasn't necessary in the show. So after the first run of the show, Bongo got cut. So he's never worked since. And he's one of the most beautiful little pipes. He's like Schnitzel in Tinka's New Dress. I thought he would right, right. take that place alongside Schnitzel. It just, you know, we cut him. <laughs>